Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Guile here, and welcome back to the Forged Alliance Forever promotional series. It was Budget Day this week here in the UK. That is the day when the government sets out its economic plans for the forthcoming year. And in honour of one group of people that have no idea how to balance an economy, I thought we'd check out another. That's right, you guessed it. It's Average Joe's Day today here at Guile Cast. Well, I can I can say that. I can be rude about them because I'm one of them. I have no idea what I'm doing in this game either. Uh, first of all, though, it's been a long time since I've done it, so I know you'll forgive me. It is, after all, the whole reason for the channel. Hello and welcome to the newest subscribers. Fantastic to have you on board. And if you like what you're looking at, guys, but you're not 100% sure what it is you're looking at, the game is Supreme Commander Forged Alliance, not Supreme Commander 2. I can't stress how important it is that you don't make that mistake. And uh, if you want to come play with us, I guess see a lot of people checking out the videos and then saying, what mods are you using? This doesn't look like the Steam game. I don't understand it. Well, it's really very simple. Uh, we're playing on a community-driven client called Forged Alliance Forever. So once you've purchased the game on Steam, you need to download the Forged Alliance Forever multiplayer client. You can find a link to that in the description below this video or failing that, just Google Forged Alliance Forever. That should point you in the right direction. And that'll allow you to come play with us, chat with us, browse our replay vaults, our mod vaults, all the rest of it. And the best part is, apart from that initial layout for the game, you get all of this continual service all for nothing. The game's regularly being balanced and updated and is constantly evolving. It's a thriving community with about 2,000 people on at peak times. Come check it out. Come play with us. Come host some games and get involved. That's enough of that. Let's get on with today's game. As we said, it's going to be Average Joe's. It's going to be on Dual Gap. Dun, 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 I'm afraid. But don't leave yet. Never know. You might enjoy it. Let's get on over to the game zone and see how they're going to get on. Ching. Kaching, instant loading, that's always a good omen. Let's check out the players. This will be Team 1 over here on the left. This will be Team 2 over here on the right. Going first for Team 1 up here. Not necessarily rearguard air position because, let's face it, there is no designation really on a match like this. But first of all, nonetheless, it's a dumpster fire. Here he is, going Aeon in Pontiff White, opening first land to his southeast down here in Cyanide Cyan. Another Aeon, this time it's so much Cancer, or Cancer as we'll be referring to him today, opening first land to his right in Burgundy Red, going the season's very fashionable UEF. It's easy kill, and he's opening first land. Across the river now, down onto the south side, it's Kate Stein. He's going Cybrin in Electric. Electric Blue opening first land to his left in Elephantine Grey. It's Angry Duke going Seraphim opening first air. If that isn't a clue that someone's going out, I don't know what is. And last but not least for Team 1, we have Steck, another filthy Cybran in Spetsnaz Green opening first land. Let's check out Team 2 over here south of the river this time because why not? Uh, Gallows Bird, another UEF in Mellow Yellow opening first land. Above him, in baby pink, we have actually Septon. He's going Seraphim and opening first land. Team member number three for team one in fabulous, vivacious violet. It's Salty, another Aeon this time in going first land. Across the river, we have Blippis, another Aeon in baby blue going first land. Team member number five for team two, we have Schmuck Benny, or Benny as we'll be referring to him today because that's infinitely less offensive. And he's opening first land, second air. And last but not least, up here in Ferrari Red, another Cybran, it's Pizzle, and he's opening first land. So there we have it, game quality at 92%, that is about as balanced as it gets, generally speaking. You can nudge it up to 94, but it's pretty good. Average team ratios for both of them work out at 13-17 apiece. That's pretty good going. You can see there's a more condensed range of values there for Team 1 than there is on Team 2. But we've got a star-rated player for Team 2 with Salty and uh, a more noobish, more my sort of level there in Blippis up front at 900. So if Team 1 really want to make an impact, they want to scalp Salty early on, get that pro out of there. We do have a couple of other 1500 rated players. K Stein there, 1500 for Team 1. And Gallows Bird there for Team 2, the yellow player. So a couple of high rated players in there. But otherwise, everybody else is of Joe categorization. That is, of course, of these Joe categorizations from yesteryear still even hold true today. To be honest, I've been doing it for so long and we've just always left them that way. I have no idea if it's particularly relevant anymore or even if it ever was to begin with. But nonetheless, let's get back to what's happening in the game. ACUs and engineers filing out on mass there from team one. Storm 
storming their way towards the middle where there is ample mass for just about everybody to get scoopage and uh, there's lots and lots of mexes in the middle of course that they'll be wanting to get their hands on blip is moving out westwards as well from his base a lot less engineer support we do have some but they're further back benny also pushing out from that base with his com and getting a good read on the inbound engineers and acus with his scout plane which is just returning from that front line there Meanwhile, over on the lakeside, we've got a transport from Duke, and uh, that was carrying five engineers. He's dropped one off on the early three mechs on his side of the lake, and he's airlifting all four onto the other side, so going for a bit of a, an aggressive land grab here, and also moving in with a T1 bomber while he's at it to try and work on some harass against the main bases of players south of the river for team two transport trying to pick its way forward past that bomber there belonging to gallows bird and that will allow him to spot that bomber and shoot it down before it can get a bomb off with his interceptor getting a little bit of assistance there from ground base anti-aircraft fire there from salty's base bomber inbound now there from benny moving in towards the middle as the acus and engineers get to their LZs, not really LZs, they're rally points, if you will, to start scooping mass. Airdrop from Gallows Bird, we saw that inbound earlier. That's been airlifted to one of the mass fields right in the center. Easy kill, though, moving in with his commander. They may well not be longed for this world. Another T1 bomber. Benny going after the Mexes initially and just overshooting by a country mile. How does he even do that? It's almost like a misclick ground fire option there, but he's coming back around. Will he switch up to the engineer? It's probably the best place to go. Yes, he will. Will he get both him and the radar? Yes, he will. Uh, marginally more successful than the first run. Inbound interceptors, though, from dumpster fire. Look to pick off that bomber and stop him from inflicting any more damage. Almost shoot it down in that first pass. It has hit eight hit points remaining. Escorting inties there from Benny, trying to block those interceptors. They shoot down one of them, but... That second interceptor managed to kill that bomber anyway before promptly getting shot down itself. T2 upgrade up front on the way for Easy Kill, who snagged four of those eight mexes in the line there next to the river. And ill-advisedly, those interceptors make landfall, or land, right next to Easy Kill's com. And he is going to go for a couple of Easy Kills right there. Isn't it nice when the names sync up with events? It's almost like it's planned. Inbound transport, heavily laden with engineers now from Septin. Heading westwards. Looks like six engineers on board. But that's going to get locked onto by interceptors from Cancer. He'll offload all of those engineers into the lake as a result. Transport will get shot down. But engineers... Hovering their way across the water now. Tack pings going down. Some upgrades going on in the base for Team 1. Couple of T2 there. We've also got gun upgrade on the way for Blippis. And the T2 upgrade there that completes. He immediately gets work. Easy kill. Gets to work on a T1 point defense as he's under fire from four Auroras here. Will complete the plasma cannon. And that will force the Auroras to back the hell up. Then he'll move forward and put to work on a triad. He did lose three of those four mexes in the line there. But uh, now it looks like he will comfortably secure the area. He's got some spam moving in as well. The odd Lobo, which is good because there's a, or was a fervor or two in the mix here. But the triad seems to have taken care of that. Absolutely vital to try and pick out the artillery pieces first since the uh, basic tanks fare much less well against point defense that looks like a controlled zone for team one another transport uh, lifting engineers in for benny Getting hard to work on harvesting those trees. This is quite the forward production plant set up by Benny. 
two, three, four, five, six land factories, soon to be seven in this area. Eight, excuse me, another one up here. Uh, T2 upgrade, 43% done there for Benny's commander. But will he be able to hold on to all of this? We already have emplacements here for easy kill. We have factories up here pumping out T1 spam and funneling it in this direction. And now these facilities under assault. That forward land factory down and out. Engineers over here hurriedly working on some point defense in two locations. Tanks for easy kill moving out. He'll wish he'll have had more Lobos to choose from to try and batter these down. Kill these clumps of engineers, but I think he's going to have to back up slightly. Blip is moving forward with his comm, and he's gone for double Aeon gun comm. So gun comm versus point defense, easy kill. With a lot of point defense now going up in this area. Doesn't want to stand there and eat unnecessary amounts of that fire. Meanwhile, we've got interceptors lurking down here for Gallows Bird. T3 upgrade on the way for Septin. T3 completed for Salty, and okay, interesting developments. It looks like we might have con droppage on the way. Gallows Bird with his com on board that T2 transport, and in line with that group of Inties over here, and there's Salty on board his transport. I'm guessing we're going to get Septim joining him. He's a little bit further behind. 83% done on his upgrade and a transport waiting. So Team 1 in control in the middle for the time being. But this could certainly throw the proverbial cat amongst the pigeons. With two comms inbound. <coughs> Excuse me. Where are they going? Are they going for the ridge? Yes, they are. And that is... K. Stein, who's on a RAS upgrade. 83% done there, who is going to be the first target. Landing the comms there, Team 2, without any hindrance. Good fight to screen for coverage just in case there were problems. Turned out there were none. Gallowsburg gets straight to work on a T2 shield gen. Salty gets to work on the anti-air. One Sam in place. Another soon to join it. And as soon as that T2 shield pops up, then a flare Sam there from Bird also under construction. Defending against the immediate threat. Any potential gunship threat that they hadn't seen. Securing the start skies, getting some shields, and now Septim there to join them. Get straight to work on attack missile upgrade. I like that. Defense is being sorted by the other two, and he gets straight to work on the offense. And there's the other form of offense. T3 point defense situated right on the cliff edge there with decent range. That's going to make life very unpleasant for K Stein down there in the valley. We do have some inbound fire from this Salem here belonging to Duke. But just one, it's going to be tough to break through the shield and counter those three comms. Thanks to the Ravager, that first commander-based tack missile breaks through and kills one of the mexes there. K. Stein went straight for the T3 upgrade after the RAS. Because he's going to try and hold on to his base here. He's going to need all the build power he can. He's already got four Gunthers in place. Four artillery emplacements. They're being very lackadaisical with their fire missions. Can they... Why are they not firing? Well, guessing because... I have no idea why they're not firing. Why are those Gunthers not firing? It's almost like he has them on hold fire. Maybe so we can open them up all together and try and get the element of surprise. Probably wants to open them up soon, though. T2 
upgrade at 57%, and now we see the issue with the Cybran defenses having to upgrade those shields. The first shield gen they build is so woefully inadequate, as are the next couple of levels, and then they start to become effective, but it's a lot of extra time that goes into the upgrades. And down goes the shield anyway. This is not a good situation for Team 1 right now. Attack Missile Volley in from where exactly? Was that from up here? There it is, the battery belonging to Duke. But the ever so effective Volcanoes managed to mitigate most of that damage. They did lose one. And there are now, of course... Attack missiles outbound from the comm. The Salem was taken out, I believe, probably by one of the attack missiles from Septim. I know there is uh, are things going on in the middle. We will get back to that in just a second, but I think you'll agree this is where the most important plays of the game currently are being made. And just look at the success here for Team 2. Those TAC missiles from Septim's commander wiping out the mass resourcing options across the river. Therefore, Cancer also hit out at Easy Kill. Easy Kill, who is doing sterling work, meanwhile, in the middle, now getting some clink hammers up to give himself as wide a berth as possible from Benny and Blippis. But this is not looking good at all, and K. Stein agrees, having taken a bit of a battering on his comm. He's down into the yellow there, 3,600 HP, moved into the river. But his base is just torn asunder. I don't know what went on with those Gunthers. I didn't see them fire a shot. <coughs> Cancer just not enjoying the, uh, the drop. This deck hates the plateaus. Well, if you don't want this to happen, I'm sorry to say, you've got to prevent against it. But you've got your air up, your radar coverage. You could have shot down some transports, got yourself some easy comm kills, but now you are facing dire circumstances. Benny trying to get work done. Moves forward. And uh, engages those forward land factories belonging to Duke, who doesn't seem to have really much of a presence elsewhere. He's got another land factory out here, but ground units seem to comprise mostly of engineers on reclaim operations. Team 1 actually still in the lead massively on total eco, but that might be down to lots of extra reclaim that they picked up from destroyed structures in their main bases generated eco they are now behind 447 versus 419 but Benny in trouble here as a massive wave of T1 spam from Cancer overruns his position his position where his comm is situated wants to make sure he doesn't get himself surrounded by too much T1 spam and overwhelmed priority targets for the time being seem to be these Gunthers and the Cerberus turrets, so much inbound fervor fire, that shiny T1 artillery shells that do so much damage to structures. And Benny in full retreat now, in danger of getting surrounded. 5,000, 4,800. He's got lots of engineers up here though, with auto gun orders in the pipeline oh I don't know why you're not still pursuing him you could still potentially have got a kill here T2 transport inbound to evac his commander this was potentially a mistake I think by cancer they might have got Benny here if they continue to press remember the commanders are slower than the spam he was close to a ranking vet though so he might well have ranked up and that would have given him enough time engineers now completing more point defense oh it's going to be close though in comes the transports 
Oh my goodness, that is very dangerous indeed. Look at all of that T1 anti-air, but a T2 transport is a hardy beast. 1500 hit points at full health, and he's going to safely evac his commander. Meanwhile, what's been going on over here? Well, much the same story as when we left it, only slightly worse for Team 1. Steck now losing all of his base pretty much. He's got a few structures left under shield coverage over here, but he had three iron reactors and a T3 air headquarters, which has been taken out. And Angry Duke now receiving volleys of clink hammer fire. Gallows Bird, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten clink hammers. He's been busy. And I don't see any way they're going to hold on to their bases against firepower of this magnitude. Oh, man. <laughs> They've tried their best. More TAC missile batteries under construction, but nope. Time to leave, boys. And that must be a devastating blow. Very well played. Lovely execution on the drop there from Team 2. Meanwhile, some forward progress in the middle. Thanks to... Solid play from Cancer, but honestly, I think they could have got a com kill there. If he hadn't stopped, if he'd continued to press, they might have been able to do it. I'm not sure where that transport was at that point, whether he had one ready. Might have been able to do exactly the same thing as he actually ultimately ended up doing only slightly earlier. But uh, woulda, coulda, shoulda, we shall never know. I think that might have been a missed opportunity personally from cancer. Vipers, meanwhile, getting good work done there from Easy Kill. Smashing down this forward base belonging to Blippis. He's prioritizing the middle for his power generation facilities, and wisely so. Nice forward naval yard as well. Naval HQ T2 working on some T2 vessels. So they've lost south of the river, but they have grabbed the initiative in the middle. Will it be enough? That's the question. We're now at the T3 phase for air. You can see ASF's out for bird over here. ASF's for dumpster fire on the left. Not for fighter bombers circling, looking for an avenue of attack. All of this stuff transferred over to Dumpster Fire just to try and temporarily enhance his eco. Meanwhile, stealth upgrade on the way for Steck. Laser upgrade on the way for Stein. Those three essentially defunct ACUs. Ticking away on some upgrades while they wait for an opportunity to once again become, once again become relevant. <coughs> There we have it. Potentially a bit of a lull in activity now. We have a, an air factory, a land factory. Stealth gens up here. Ouch. Those clink hammer volleys. Just a thing of beauty. And really, Team 2 in a pretty pickle right now. They need to get something done. This is good forward motion from them, though. But it's all T1 spam for Cancer and just Viper missile launchers for easy kill. They've got no real hard-hitting, powerful direct-fire units in there. And no real look towards pumping those out in the middle. Where are we at on the ground game over here? So Blip is busy sealing up this aperture north of the river, the southern approach. It's got a lot of Oblivion turrets queued up there. 
This uh, northern aperture, though, definitely a way to make an entrance. Easy Kill and Cancer doing just that as they filed past a small Mantis Vanguard that was sitting in situ at the entrance to that canyon. Down that goes without any real opposition. And he's going to want to get to work on some defenses. You can see all the Cerberus turrets queued up there. I'm sure they will be hurriedly under construction the moment that iron reactor completes. Which it's just about to, but the first units are making their way in now. It's a race to get those defenses up in time, I think. He might just be alright. Remember, they kind of have to file in through that canyon in single file, which is never a great way to end up facing an enemy at the end of it. Auto guns up front over here. Cerberus turrets at the back. making some forward progress but every moment that passes more defenses come online in this base for Benny the all important fervors are in play now starting to land their rounds on the engineers and the defenses that T2 radar surely wants to grab one shell T1 bombers overhead belonging to Benny trying to assist with the defensive operation. He's going to start losing some Cerberus turrets, but I think he's keeping up with the flow quite nicely. These land factories producing Mantis still looking pretty healthy. The radar has gone down finally. Oh, that is a nice clump though. He wants some bombing runs in there. That will take out huge numbers of units. Just like that. Not a good place to stop your tanks. Another bit of micro fail, I think, there from Cancer. And now we've got bricks rolling in from Pizzle. This offensive is over. Got lots of governors, meanwhile, in the lake that have been stacking up from Easy Kill's Naval HQ over here that have been bombarding this ridge position. And we've got a strategic missile defense. I'm wondering if he's spotted something. There we have it. There's the nuke launcher. Oh, my goodness me. And Gallo's bird has airlifted his comm during that offensive over here. Very ill-advisedly. Gone for a drop by himself, I guess buoyed by his earlier performance. Starting to feel like he's invincible, but that's a terrible position to find himself in. He's now surrounded by three commanders. K Stein's got the laser upgrade on his, but I don't think he's even going to get into range before Kalos Bird goes down a completely unnecessary death. Bosh! So actually the first comm to go down is one from Team 2. Completely unnecessary. And he's one of their 1500 rated players, but that's what happens after you get a, a really good start. You start to feel like you're invincible. I guess he took his comm over here. It looks like he got some work done. You can see the deceased structures in the area there to the west of Dumpster Fire's base. And he did have a bunch of buildings up in play. Sorry we missed that drop, but that was an important raid we were witnessing on Benny's base. To show a little bit of variety rather than just sitting in this section. But yeah, very ill advised at the end of it. Septim's also made his way down from the ridge and is working some, on some point defense on the shoreline there. He's got about four land factories up just at the foot of the cliff. And lots of engineers busy picking up the mexes and reclaiming destroyed structures. But remember, we've got K-Stein's comm here, which has got the laser. I'm surprised he managed to finish that with no base eco to draw from, but he has managed it. Bombers from Benny still getting work done before getting shot down by hordes of ASFs there belonging to Dumpster Fire. It's 
the uh, 1700 rated player, Salty, the one person they want to kill, deems it not safe enough to leave the ridge, and I kind of agree with him at this point. Just carry on turtling up in here. Look, they've lost all of this defensive firepower. Admittedly, it was geared up over here, but those clink hammers would have had a firing solution on all of the navy down here that's allowed these vessels to get in close once again. The good play would have been to bring your con down here, start building up and pushing out towards the river. That would have been the safe play. Now, can Team 1 come back from this? Being timid here. I think they could make a play for that commander. And you can see the attack pings going down on him. He's not working on defences. He's working on another attack missile battery. He wants to keep these guys across the river on their toes. Not thinking about his own defence. And that might be a mistake as K. Stein looks like he wants to go for it now. Moving his comm towards Septim. Only defences are that one shield... And that comm isn't the comm with stealth. Steck over here has got the stealth. He's going for a gun upgrade. What's he going to do? K. Stein getting into range now. The vessel's firing on the shield. The shield collapses and is taken out. K. Stein almost in range now. A close range tap missile snipe attempt. Fails. K Stein hot on his heels now. Septin starts the move. K Stein does a pirouette for absolutely no good reason whatsoever. I'm guessing it's because he wants to bring in the transport, but that's an unnecessary risk. Why is he doing that? He'd get himself shot down. Fortunately, there are no aircraft in the area. Septin moving forward and control cases come and takes him out. He knew he was dead. <laughs> Why did he pick his com up in the transport? He didn't need to do that. But still, I mean, they're trading one commander who's got no base left for a whole other commander who's now lost all his structures on the ridge. Salty again loses more defensive structures. Those shields have gone down, has to rebuild those. Salty all alone. Yeah. But he's the one. He's the dangerous one. And now the two other comms departure means that Salty is going to benefit from that demise directly. He's going to have an enormous eco. And he is the player that uh, you just don't want having an enormous eco if you're team one. A wave of spy planes pass overhead. got any way to hit back. We have a nuke loaded. Brass upgrade on the way for Angry Duke sitting in Dumpster Fire's base. He's actually lost a few of his governors in the lake there. Easy kill. Not sure if that was from miasma fire it could well have been salty with some artillery pieces on the ridge now compensating for the ones that he lost when bird essentially suicided himself with that second unnecessary drop can you tell i'm still bitter about that don't know why i'm not supporting team two or anything ah of course he was uh it was uef <laughs> you see it was subliminal i didn't even realize it Uh, easy kill, excuse me, with a decent number of clink hammers in the middle, but they need to find some offensive weaponry. I mean, it's all well and good turtling up here, but they need a way to hit back at Team 2. A strap bomber lurking from Pizzle now. About to say Pizzle and Blippis haven't been quite quiet in this game, but they are the, the lowest rated players, remember? 900 and 1,000, so... Would expect that to be the case. Tempest on the way for Blippis. Ooh, and a Megalith for 
pizzle. Pizzle, pizzle. And there it is, dirty cybering teleportation. 23% complete on teleporter and he's got the laser already. Will he try and get in here and snipe Salty? That would be the way to go, I would think. Get in there and take him out and suddenly this game is wide open. We do have strats up on the ridge. Stacking up there for dumpster fire, so maybe he's lining up for an attack. Remember, they don't actually have to get the snipe, they just have to take out that anti-nuke. I think there's only one there. See another anti-nuke? Don't. One anti-nuke silo with two anti-nuke missiles loaded. So they take that out and then they can hit that position with that nuke launcher which is loaded and ready to go. Teleporter at 50%. Get me, to t get me a T3 P-Gen, please, so I can use Tele. Steck asking for assistance. That would surely be the way to go. I'm not seeing huge quantities of T1 point defense around here. A quick drop in and Salty would be history. ASS for Salty. Getting chopped down by that air wing from Dumpster Fire. It's good because he'll want as clear a run as possible, I'm guessing, for these strats. Salty working on more anti-air. Perhaps he senses the snipe attempt. More governors stacking up over here. Trying to overwhelm those tactical missile defenses, but it's so difficult against those Aeon TMDs, those volcanoes. They are so effective. Ninety-seven percent, ninety-eight percent. He is nearly there. Has someone actually donated him? Yes, they have. So, cancers offloaded one of his reactors to that commander. Teleporter done. Now where's he going to go? I'm hoping he's going to try and hit Salty. Steck asking for a scout now. Tempest has been spied on its way out. And goodness me, hasn't it wrecked all of those destroyers that were in the middle moving in belonging to Easy Kill? Still yet to pick a location. I really don't know what the difficulty is. Surely you take out Salty. Don't you? You take him out, it's all over. Steck still asking for the scout. No one doing it. Needs to know his shield. This is where TeamSpeak or Discord or whatever comes in handy feeling these guys aren't a group necessarily who play together all the time but the strat bombers are given an attack order and they are going in towards salty's position are they going for the com looks oh no they have to pull out restorers move in so they pull away they bait the restorers out asfs take care of those aa gunships just strat the SMD and nuke him, says Angry Duke. Still no teleport yet. Bomber's moving in the wrong direction. Surely he's got enough to penetrate shield cover. It's difficult when they're high up, remember. Meanwhile, check this out. Forward motion on the ground in the middle. But that megalith having a bad day to T1. <laughs> Artillery fire furthers taking down a megalith. Don't see that every day. Pizzle. Not 
quite making his mark on this game as yet. Steck still asking for a scout but not getting it. Attack pings going down on that patron. My god, they're keeping us hanging, aren't they? Is that it? Is that the attack order? Strap bombs moving in that direction with purpose now. And it looks like the SMD is the target. Salty senses what's coming. He's getting to work on some eruptors. Opportunity missed there, perhaps. The first wave is over. One bomb gets through as the shields collapse. Takes it down to 348 hit points. They need to come around. No, do not attack from that direction. They need to come around from the top. No, he's going to get his shields blocked once again. In fact, one of them kills himself, landing the bomb on the shield at that altitude. And I don't believe it. It survives. The teleport is already under fire from those eruptors. Salty paying attention and the teleport is cancelled. Oh, my God. That went horribly. He just had to bring the strap bombers around and attack again from the north. And that is dead. And there was no way to stop it. We've already got torpedo bombers. T3 torpedo bombers lurking down here for Salty. You might want to try and pick off one of these comms now. Remember those T3 torpedo bombers are absolutely brutal. Although they might just fly over a whole bunch of governors and get themselves shot down. That's another option. <laughs> Getting excited there. Looked like there might be a, a kill on the cards. But no, I can't believe that they didn't manage to take that out. 348 hit points on that strategic missile defense. He judged what was happening just in time. Salty and started working on those eruptors. But to be honest, no one was scouting for Steck. Steck should have just gone. He could have killed Salty a while ago if he'd have just stepped in. And then this entire threat would have gone. Everything here would have gone. And Team 2 would have been left in a pretty pickle, losing their star player and being on the back foot in the middle also. This game would have Strategic been wide open for Team detected. 1, but now we're launching nukes. Where are we sending them? We're sending them at a place that has nuke defense ready to go. That is a wasted nuke. Strategic launch detected. Oh, don't send another one in, because he is going to have more than that. He's got two more anti nukes. They're all going to get shot down. Oh, this is painful. And now Salty expanding out onto the redundant places down here. Steck not happy at all with his teammate. Oh, man. And I can kind of see why. A bit, but it's, it's hard in the, uh, the heat of the moment to get that right, but all he had to do was circle those bomb around, bombers round. But another nuke is going to get shot down now. Three nukes. Yeah. Uh, dumps the note. At this point, he messed up. And now we've got Tempests and Omens rolling in from the east. Salty in firm control of this position down here. What a wonderfully executed drop this has turned out to be. Team 1 have certainly missed an opportunity to take the initiative here. Steck, when he realised he wasn't getting a scout, should have just gone in. It is, as we always say, easy for us when we can see everything to know that that's what they should have done. And now the petty recrimination starts in local chat or allied chat on Team 1. As is always the way. Awasar on the way as well for, I'm guessing, Duke once he finishes his T3 upgrade.
tempests and omens breaching in now through the river and this will surely signify the end of team one there's no way that they're going to be able to fend this off oh and look they're about to have t3 artillery to worry about as well as benny is about to go into the green on that disruptor 7,800 HP there. Oh, and a Scathis. It'll be a while before that completes for Pizzle, but, but how peaceful it's been for everybody over here, except for that one attack that poured in that Benny managed to fend off. But mistakes were made, as in, that you would expect them to be. And let's face it, you know what? Most games of Sopcom have mistakes in them, and we rarely feature them here on the channel, which is uh, unfair, I think. It does give us a bit of a skewed impression of how things are going on. And a Solace takes care of Steck there. We thought that uh, something might go down with those Solaces, and they're going after Dumpster Fire now, who's hurriedly trying to get his big metal backside on land get away from those torpedoes he does manage it 42 minutes gone and I think we are starting to enter the closing stages of the game now lots of strap bombers up here again for dumpster fire but they're gonna get caught by Benny he's gonna shoot down as many as he can before the defending interceptors move in he gets all of them. He got all of the strap bombers. A lovely little snag there. Strategic launch detected. Cancer going for a nuke. Leads a little bit too much. He's going to miss some vessels back here. Doesn't uh, factor in how close they actually are to his nuke launcher and the lack of travel time needed. And as such, he's going to bag maybe a battleship. Maybe a cruiser or two. The Tempest will tank that. That's on a, about 11,000 hit points still. Cancer probably not going to get another shot with that nuke launcher now. Tempests will start to carve up this base. He does manage to complete a GC. And that'll be the disruptor fire landing straight in the middle of dumpster fires eco and a control k out from both dumpster fire there and cancer they are done and dusted wonderful play from team two salty in particular gone for a nuke launcher himself up on the ridge who didn't um didn't rush ahead like his other two drop mates did and advancing down here with some ill-advised expansion drops. Salty, I am the real tumor. Yes, yes you are, sir. Burrowed in and immobile or immovable. Easy kill with a nuke launcher up here. I feel a bit sorry for him. He'd been pretty solid throughout, although check out his forward position over here with the passing of those tempests and those battleships. His forward position was taken apart from the sea, so he had to back up over here. And now he's the the, uh, the last sole re remaining survivor for Team 1. Finds himself the recipient of some T3 artillery inbound ordnance. Staying out to the end... But with a GC inbound, answers on a postcard. And in the comments below, who is going to take him out first? Is it going to be the artillery? Is it going to be the GC? It's going to be the artillery, I think, as that shell takes him down to 1600. And Benny does snag the kill. And that brings the game to a close. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. Please dump a like on this video as it helps the uh, algorithm as does commenting in the comment section below uh, do subscribe and ring that bell as well if you haven't done so already and also if you want to catch more action but you've seen everything to date then consider subscribing to patreon details in the description below the video it is only a dollar a month new casts out every week 
we're up to 18 or something or so now and that is a uh, privileged content just for patreon subscribers so do check that out guys every little penny does help me out specifically especially at the uh, this time of uh, well the pandemic and lockdown everything everything that's going on every cent or penny is gratefully received and appreciated guys but until next time do take care of yourselves stay well and stay safe this is guile signing out